Morgan Spencer and the Charm need a big win to advance to the playoffs. Lindsey Noble and the Heart want to play spoiler. Baltimore, Omaha, now. We are the best team in this league. And we're going to show up today by ground and pound and beating them into submission. They say, help me up. I say, hell no. Put your foot on their throat and don't take it off, even if they turn purple. Today is our day. Today is our day of reign of terror on this league. This is a dream that you can win. Football in Omaha, Nebraska, the site for LFL Football Night. Welcome once again, LFL fans around the world, 70 countries strong. I'm Chet Buchanan. He's the coach, Bobby Huco, and the most interesting of games tonight, Omaha is out of the Eastern Conference playoff picture. They've been playing well of late, though, and they can spoil the playoff party for Baltimore. Absolutely. The heart started 0-2. A lot of people thought their head coach, Dante Allen, was going to be fired. Against Toledo, however, big game, big win, 31 to nothing. If he can somehow beat Baltimore, a two-game winning streak going into 2015, this team looks strong. Let's take a look at the Eastern Conference standings now. As you can see, Baltimore is chasing Atlanta. The playoff picture is real simple. Jacksonville is already into the Eastern Conference Championship as the number one seed. If Baltimore would like to join them there, they have to win tonight in Omaha by at least 17 points. So, Coach, how do the Baltimore Charm intend to do just that. Well, they have the right head coach, Gary Clark. He played for the Washington Redskins, a great wide receiver. He played for the Posse. They scored all kind of points in the NFL. He brought that offense to Baltimore. Very exciting. He developed Morgan Spencer, a quarterback, a strong-arm quarterback who has become the franchise quarterback for Baltimore. And she has two great receivers to go tonight. They're both sisters, Allie and Savannah Dickey. They can both go deep. They have to play big tonight to have any chance to win. The story all season long for Omaha has been that top-ranked defense. Defense. And their defensive coordinator, Willie Garrett, has these players believing that they can carry their team to victory. He believes in them so much that not only is he guaranteed that Baltimore will not outscore Omaha by 17, he's even guaranteed that Baltimore won't even score 17 points, period. Now, for Coach Garrett to make good on that promise, he needs his entire defense to play well, but especially his outstanding defensive ends. On one side, you've got the 2013 LF. USA leading tackler Jacqueline Smith. She brings the speed off the edge. On the other side, one of the top ranked defensive ends of all time, Danielle Hawkins. Put those two together, it's a great one two punch for Omaha. Now add in Brittany Demery. She's got great size. She's a solid tackler. Coach Garrett loves the progress of his rookie safety, Morgan Anderson. And you can't even begin to talk about the Omaha defense without mentioning one of the top tacklers in all of LFL USA, Teresa Petrozello. Should be interesting tonight. The stage is set. Can the Baltimore Charm come into the farm in Omaha and win by 17? Or is Omaha going to spoil the Baltimore playoff party and throw a little party of their own for this big rowdy crowd? LFL Football Night, your kickoff is next. As we mentioned in pregame, they love their football in Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome inside the farm for LFL football night. That's Brittany Demery getting the crowd hyped, and they don't need it because they're loud already inside the farm. Baltimore's Allie Dickey. Omaha's Jackie Smith. They're ready to go. LFL football night. Baltimore needs to win by 17. Ashley Lambrecht ready to kick off. It is is on the kickoff will sail out of bounds baltimore will take over on their own 15. not a bad kick right there lambert put it out of bounds but it stopped any possible return once again baltimore needs to win by 17 tonight there's their franchise quarterback morgan spencer she's got respect for this omaha defense looking at omaha's defense they don't have very many weaknesses so we can't make any mistakes the d-line blitzes and they blitz hard so we have to take advantage of the field left behind. Morgan Spencer has to have the game of her life tonight. They have to win by more than 17 points. To do that, she has to start off strong and have zero mistakes tonight. Her stats this year are not bad, Chet. 
Six out of 17, 49 yards, two touchdowns. The ratings marginal, 58, but she's got a gun and she's got to go deep tonight. But Savannah Dickey is under center. Spencer is lined up to the left. She'll get the ball, heading around the right side. A run of about eight yards on first down. A little trickeration right out of the gate. Coach Gary Clark said a lot of different players will play different positions tonight. Now let's meet the Baltimore Charm offense. Allie Dickey, center. Savannah Dickey, at tight end. Jessica Johnson, tight end. Cardi Davis, tight end. Tashana Gaines, wide receiver. T.C. Mesta, your running back. Morgan Spencer, quarterback. Baltimore has to go big or go home, Chad. It all starts with that quarterback, Morgan Spencer. The second down, Spencer is under center this time. She'll hand the ball off. That's Allie Dickey. First down yardage and more inside the 20-yard line, a gain of seven. Allie Dickey, she's got a great burst and a great change of direction. She's going to get the ball a lot tonight. She'll have to do it against the top-ranked defense in the LFL. Let's meet the Omaha Heart defense. Danielle Hawkins, defensive end. Brittany Dimery, defensive end. Jacqueline Smith, your linebacker. Dante Bunting, cornerback. Morgan Anderson, cornerback. Teresa Petrozello, safety. Ashley Lambrick, free safety. That's led by Jackie Smith in the middle. The Wolverine, she's called the Wolverine because she turned into an animal on the field. On first down, that play gets blown up. We talked about her in pregame. Look at her getting physical. That's Danielle Hawkins, a huge loss for Baltimore. You talked about her in the pregame. Watch her come off the edge. Right fights through a block. They try a reverse. Danielle Hawkins, a pancake. That girl leaves it on the field every week. What a hit. Brittany Demery got in there to grab the jersey and slow her up. Danielle Hawkins finished her off for a six-yard loss. Second and 16 now for Baltimore. Coach Gary Clark said he's going to pull all stops. This is a different formation we've never seen all year, Chet. Once again, Baltimore needs a lot of points tonight. They'll keep it on the ground on second down. Kim Jack is clotheslined down by Teresa Petrozello. What a hit by Petrozello to bring down Kim Jack, the assassin. We know her as one of the sack masters, the top defensive end in the league. They got her playing offense tonight. Coach Clark said she's going to get the ball out. Watch out for Kim Jack, Jet. Jack got five yards on second down. It'll bring up a third and long. Third and 11 for Morgan Spencer in the Baltimore offense. On the ground again to Kim Jack. Same play, better result. Kim Jack is loose to the goal line. Touchdown, Baltimore. Just what they needed early. Holy cow, Kim Jack is a beast on offense just like she is on defense. The sack master, the assassin, the same play. Great stock walking down the field. Nobody there, and she completely destroys the Omaha defense. Wow, that's the start Baltimore needs. Shantae Bunting got there for Omaha, but too little too late. 6 nothing Baltimore charm. Again, they need to beat Omaha by 17 tonight to get into the playoffs. Gary Clark's got to love that. He has his team ready to play. Already, they're only two scores away from going to the playoffs, and we just started the game. Baltimore will go for the one-point conversion. No need to get too aggressive early. 6-0 Baltimore. Early in the first quarter at the farm, as Spencer goes down, bad center quarterback exchange. Interesting, because Allie Dickey is the usual center. They had Jessica Johnson in there. And on a night when you need points, you cannot have bad exchanges like that. But it's still a great start for Baltimore. The Omaha defense is hitting hard, but Baltimore is up six on LFL football night. Back to Omaha, Nebraska, where they love their football. A packed house inside the farm. The Baltimore charm is up 6-0 as Lindsey Noble and the Omaha offense will get their first shot at it. On first down, Lindsey Noble will throw deep. Got a receiver open just too far for Teresa Petrozello. They could have tied it up just like that. Great pass right there by Noble. She had Petrozello open, just couldn't get her the football. Noble stats are not great. Six out of 14, 47 yards. But look at that rated. Because of the three touchdowns, she's over 90. Solid quarterback, great leader. She wants to win this bad and take Baltimore out of the playoff structure. 
She looked really good against Toledo as the Omaha Heart beat Toledo 31 to nothing. They're trying to spoil Baltimore's playoff party tonight. A second down and 10. We're still early first quarter at the farm. Ashley Lambrecht, hard hitting inside, back to the line of scrimmage. The Baltimore defense wants to step up and say, hey, we're pretty good too. Watch T.C. Mesta. We know her's a running back, but at middle linebacker, another pancake. T.C. Mesta came off a big injury a year ago. She's back 100% and doing great on both sides of the ball for the charm. Allie Dickey was there as well for the Baltimore defense. It'll bring up third and 10 now for Lindsey Noble and the Omaha Heart offense. Runner pass here, coach. I really think they're gonna run the ball and try to put it right down Baltimore's throat. They will run the end around to Petrozello. Five, maybe six yards out to the 20. Let's meet the Omaha Heart offense now. Sarah Robinson, center. Lindsey Burst, guard. Shalane Durham, tight end. Morgan Anderson, wide receiver. Teresa Petrozello, wide receiver. Ashley Lambert, wide receiver. Lindsey Noble, quarterback. Lindsey Noble having a great year at quarterback. I think she is the number one reason why Dante Allen did not get fired this year. She brought this offense back, Chet. On fourth and four, Ashley Lambrecht will get out across midfield for a first down for Omaha. Critical first down there. Lambrecht used to play quarterback. Now she's their feature back. In suddenly, seemingly no time, she went from quarterback. Now she's a star running back. Omaha offense continues this drive just into Baltimore territory at the 24. They'll keep it on the ground again. Morgan Anderson this time with the end around. Four hard yards down to the 20. Jessica Johnson and Allie Dickey there for Baltimore. Allie Dickey, one of the top cornerbacks in the game. She stayed put. She knew it was coming back her side. She didn't pursue. She stayed her ground and made a great play. Omaha keeping with the outside running game. Haven't put too much pressure on Lindsey Noble yet throwing the ball, except for that first play where they tried to go deep. And that should have been a score, Chet. Should have been six points. Second and six. This time, play action. Noble got a receiver again. Just too far again. That time, a little too far for Morgan Anderson. Heavy pressure by Tashana Gaines. Now let's meet the Baltimore defense. T.C. Messa, linebacker. Crystal Gargani, linebacker. Blanca, at defensive end. Cardi Davis, corner. Jessica Johnson, defensive end. Tashana Gaines, safety. Allie Dickey, safety. That D is led by Kim Jack, the assassin. She's a street fighter. She's so tough that she plays in the beltway around D.C. Fake the handoff one way, give it the other. Ashley Lambrecht met there at the line of scrimmage. You just mentioned her. Kim Jack, T.C. Mesta there with the tackle. Kim Jack, she's become the stalwart of this defense. Watch her come down the line. Read, react, attack. Lambrecht going down hard. Another half a second, Ali Dickey would have been there as well. Swarm tackling for the Baltimore Charm defense. Another fourth down for Omaha. Fourth and six now from the 20. Noble will keep it herself. She is not going to get the first down. Brought down by Jessica Johnson. Watch Johnson. She sheds a blocker and brings Noble straight down. Not sure that was a good call, fourth and six. You got to put the ball in the air. Baltimore needs to win tonight by 17. Already a 6-0 lead late in the first quarter at the farm in Omaha on LFL football night. Omaha head coach Dante Allen, no points. Already he is the owner of a lonely heart here in Omaha. First and 10 for Baltimore at their own 20-yard line. Should be the final play of the first quarter. Dickey now takes the snap. She'll run it herself around the right side, out to midfield as we reach the end of the first quarter. The Omaha Heart trying to play spoilers in front of a loud and rowdy home crowd. Allie Dickey and the rest of the Baltimore Charm desperate for a playoff spot on LFL football night at the end of the first quarter. Baltimore is up six and hitting hard. Back to 
beautiful Omaha, Nebraska as we begin second quarter action on LFL football night. Morgan Spencer and the Baltimore offense, they need to put up some points. They came ready to play. They're only two scores away from covering that 17 points. That top-ranked defense of the Omaha Heart is standing in the way of Baltimore's playoff hopes. Baltimore once again has to win by 17 tonight. As you can see, they're only up six now with a second and five. First play of the second quarter from midfield on the ground Ali Dickey swarmed under for a loss of three great play by Lambrecht she came from the safety position made a great stop and as always Danielle Hawkins followed up Hawkins is just fundamentally sound she always puts herself in the right position to make a tackle Baltimore will face a third and long early in the second quarter at the farm in Omaha you can hear it's loud here. Spencer changes the play. A couple of receivers come up to the line. They try to get some blocking, and they just cannot get through the Omaha defense. Chad, I'm not sure I like that play selection. We talked about this wide-open offense that Gary Clark has. It's third down, eight yards to go, and they run T.C. Mesa, not known for her speed. She only got two yards there. Now it puts Morgan Spencer in a really tough fourth down position. Fourth down and six. Again, Baltimore needs points. He's not sure about her play. It was called in the huddle, but she's not sure where to go. This doesn't look good for Baltimore. What will Spencer do here on fourth down? Play action. She'll throw under pressure. Tries to dump it down over the head of Jessica Johnson. Omaha will take over on downs. Again, there was a lot of confusion. She didn't know what play to call with play action. The back she faked to, supposed to chip the defensive end. She did not. A strong rush, bad play, a bad series for the Baltimore Charm. Was that supposed to be a screen pass there, Coach, or was that just a, a check down? No, it was just trying to get rid of the ball. There was so much pressure, she couldn't step up in the pocket. Just a bad call. But it was set up by a bad third down call with T.C. Mesta getting the ball instead of throwing a pass. Omaha starts in enemy territory at the Baltimore 24. Bad exchange, ball on the ground. Recovered by Omaha. Jenna Holt fell on it, but they lose a bunch back to their own 16-yard line. What a play by Kim Jack. The ball was on the ground. The pig was on the field. They couldn't find it. They got to get the ball. Watch, it's on the field in a game like this. Great play. The ball's here. Three Baltimore players could not pick up the football. To the play, Jenna Holt and Savannah Dickey mixing it up a little bit. Second and 20 now for Omaha as they're going backwards. 5.35 to go in the first half. Fake one way, go the other again. They do a lot of misdirection in Omaha. This time, Ashley Lambrecht will get a couple of yards back to the 18. Chet, I can't tell you how big that recovery was by Jenna Holt. That might have kicked. You watch that play. I got a feeling that's going to come back and haunt Baltimore. If they would have got that ball, taken that in, they might be able to cover that 17 points. Turnovers like that, when you get a chance, you got to get the ball. Third and 18, Omaha needs to get to the Baltimore 14 for a first down. They'll throw here. Lindsey Noble down the left side. Intended for Morgan Anderson. There's a flag on the play. I believe they're calling holding in the secondary. Coach Gary Clark doesn't like this call at all because he said the ball was not catchable. He's yelling big time at the refs. It's not catchable. Not a ball. He might have a valid point. Holding defense, number two on an eligible pass receiver. Five yards, automatic first down. Allie Dickey, she got called for holding, so Coach Clark was wrong right there. It doesn't matter about the pass interference. It was a hold. You got to call that right, Chet? Holding is holding is holding. It's not pass interference. Exactly. That'll be a first down for Omaha. Back into, well, close to midfield now at their own 23. Noble's going to throw on first down. Looking for Teresa Petrozello. She just can't hang on. Nice coverage there from Ali Dickey. Where is the Omaha hard offensive line? Sarah Robinson, Lindsey Burst, where are you? There's all over Lindsey Noble. She has no time to get rid of the football. 
Omaha quickly to the line with a second and 10 now. This game is all Baltimore so far. This should be really a three touchdown game right now. It's only a one score game, but Baltimore looks good. Omaha looks terrible. The Omaha defense have kept him in it. Now they just need to see if they can generate some offense. Noble will throw again, under pressure again, hit again, passes too far again. That time, she was looking for Shante Bunting. Shante Bunting was open again. No protection up front. Lindsey Noble takes a shot. She got rid of the ball, but if she had any time at all, that could have been a touchdown for Omaha. Noble not known as a passing quarterback in her defense, but they've got to give her some time. She is not a bad passer. In fact, if you give her time, she delivers a good football. She doesn't have a gun, but she puts the ball where it has to be. But she needs protection. Will she throw here on third and ten? No. Hand it off. Shante Bunting hit hard out of bounds at the 21-yard line by Savannah Dickey. Shante Bunting, she played point guard at Southwestern College. A great all-around athlete. She ran track, but she got smashed right there by one of the Dickey sisters. A six-yard gain on third down makes a manageable fourth and four here for Omaha. This is a big play for Lindsey Noble in the heart. Noble in the shotgun. Play action. Nope, she'll keep it herself. Right up the middle. First down yardage. Inside the 15. What a huge first down for the Omaha Heart. I like that call. A little deception in the backfield. Watch this. It opens up right over the center. Fake right there. Great lead block. Great cut by Noble to get a key first down. Sometimes the Omaha Heart offense looks really good. You see what might be in the future for Omaha if they can just perfect this misdirection and get their assignments right. Quarterback Lindsey Noble is having a great year. She's the reason this offense has come back to life. First down from the Baltimore 14. Flag on the play as Brittany Demery goes up the gut for eight yards. We'll have to find out what the call is here. This is going to be interesting because I didn't see anything. We'll see what they'll call. It looked clean to me. Allie Dickey and Savannah Dickey teamed up on the stop. She did man motion at the same time. On the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Not sure about that call. I've never questioned the official's integrity. Just his eyesight. And right there, that did not look like a penalty. Well, and like we said, the Omaha offense, if they get their assignments right and they get this thing clicking, they can look good at times right there. Really, uh, you don't need to make those kind of mistakes. Not at all. They look like they're on a roll right now. The quarterback, Noble, has them moving. Back them up, first and 15. Noble will throw this time. Has a receiver open, just under threw it. Morgan Anderson, the intended receiver. Gary Clark brought the house. All seven players on the line of scrimmage. They should have checked off and thrown a fade pattern. It would have been six points, but there was nobody, no safeties. They could have thrown anything in the end zone and scored. Looked like the ball slipped out of Noble's hand as she went to throw. Regardless, it's a second and 15 now. As good as they looked at the beginning of this drive, they're not sharp. They're all confused right now, Chet. They're going to call timeout. Actually, they don't have to call timeout. The two-minute warning did it for them and probably saved the day for Omaha. Two minutes left to go in the first half. Baltimore fighting and scrapping for a playoff spot. Two minutes left to go in the first half at the farm in Omaha on LFL football night. Lindsey Noble and the Omaha offense down six. They've got a second and 15 at the Baltimore 19-yard line. Not a lot of fireworks so far, Coach. Not at all. Both offenses not looking too sharp. Lindsey Noble, she'll run herself. Back to the original line of scrimmage. She'll gain about six on second down. Solid run by Lindsey Noble. Got six yards. Now it's a makeable third and nine where she can throw the football. Will she throw on third and nine? Omaha's kept the ball on the ground quite a bit. She will throw. Pressure gets away. Throws to the end zone. Picked off by Baltimore. Angela Orsini makes the interception for the Baltimore charm. I blame the coaching on this. She should have checked off. They came with the house again. Everybody came. 
You got to check off and throw a hot to a hot receiver. She broke away from the pocket, but she burnt dog her receiver. Great interception by Baltimore. They got a chance to get another touchdown before halftime and get closer to covering that 17 points. Orsini started out on the defensive line, peeled off, and went 10 yards back in coverage and made that interception. Great play by Orsini was a zone blitz. Gary Clark, again, a great defensive call. Everybody on the line of scrimmage, and he broke a girl back in a zone blitz. Great defensive call. Baltimore leads by six, needs to win by 17. Just stopping Omaha from scoring there was huge. Now they have a chance to put up points before halftime. Morgan Spencer will complete the pass out across the five toward the 10-yard line. Allie Dickey made the catch. Great read here by Morgan Spencer. Watch this, he sets up properly, steps up, checks down, hits Allie Dickey in the flat, a solid gain. A great read by Morgan Spencer. Second and four with 124 left to go. Clock running in the half. Spencer will throw again. Smart play, dumps it down to Tashana Gates. She's got room to run. Out past the 15, flag comes flying in. Give her seven yards on the game. We got to see what the call is here. It looked like an illegal block way down the field. But again, Morgan Spencer looks great in the pocket. Checks down, finds a wide open receiver. Allie Dickey, Kim Jack, and Savannah Dickey. Great blocking up front. But as you said, Coach, was there an illegal block? Let's get the call. Turn your run. Block in the back. Number four on the offense. What the fuck? Five yards. Follow the foul. Repeat second down. Ticky tacky call right there. Barely touched the defensive back. Skim by her. Little push, maybe. Gary Clark's going nuts. I better stop the fucking home cooking shit. That's bullshit. You better start calling this shit fucking straight. Right on, Gary Clark. I'm with him 100%. That call should not be made in a game this big. After the penalty, second and two. Spencer dumps it down, this time to T.C. Mesta. Out across midfield. She'll pick up the first down after a 16-yard gain. Great throw by Morgan Spencer. But there's a flag. They're bringing this one back. Coach Clark is going bananas. Look at this. That's bullshit. Fucking bullshit. What the fuck are y'all calling? What the fuck are y'all calling? bullshit. Y'all fucking home cooking. It's fucking bullshit. What the fuck are you calling? That is fucking bullshit. Your brother's not calling that shit straight. Your fucking home cooking. This is a long cooking shit. Bullshit. A bullfuck. I'll fuck you up. Wow, you cannot threaten a referee, but I believe. Gary Clark is right again. That should be a no call. And that may be the only reason Coach Clark is still on the bench. Now, after all of that, on second down, Spencer's pass is incomplete to Allie Dickey. It'll bring up a third and seven. Chad, if you remember last season, Baltimore was knocked out of a playoff spot by a very, very controversial call. Coach Clark remembers that. He doesn't want it to happen again tonight, and it looks like it might. He's got to stay calm to keep his team calm. 50 seconds left to go in the first half. Baltimore needs to win by 17. They're up six with a third and seven from their own six yard line. Get the first down first, worry about scoring later. Morgan Spencer to pass. Under pressure, she'll dump it down. TC Mesta can't hang on. Danielle Hawkins provided the pressure for Omaha. Oh, here we go, another flag's on the field, but we got a Donnybrook breaking out. Everybody involved for both teams will have to see who's at the bottom of that pile and who the refs decide to penalize. They have to retain some order right now. This game is getting out of control. The coaches are on the field. Gary Clark's threatening a referee. They got to get this back to being football. Shante Bunting there, but it didn't look like she was at the bottom of the pile. I saw Shaylin Durham at the bottom of the pile for Omaha. Didn't catch the number for the Baltimore player. And it all started with those two calls against Baltimore that destroyed their momentum on this drive. Didn't look like Shante Bunting was the one at the bottom of the pile. That looked like Shailene Durham, but she is the one who has the most words for the officials. The Omaha crowd loves it. That guy in the gray shirt, he looks like a street fighter. Look, he's ready to hop on the field. Referee tonight is Vince Hayes, and it looks like they've almost got it all sorted out. After the play is over, personal foul. Number eight is restricted for one series. 
Brittany Demery, she's out of the game for one series. One of the toughest players in the LFL. That's a big break for Morgan Spencer and the Baltimore Charm. Well, maybe that'll answer Gary Clark's question about whether the referees are homers tonight or not. I'm not sure if they're homers, but the officiating tonight has not been sharp. First and 10 for Baltimore at their own 16-yard line as we make our way towards the end of the first half. Spencer will throw. Plenty of receivers in the pattern. She'll check down to T.C. Mesta. Only a yard gain on the play. Teresa Petrozello getting physical. Whoa. And Mesta answers. And another fight breaks out. Is this a UFC? What a takedown. She's got her in a sleeper hole. This is unbelievable. Danielle Hawkins is involved as well, although you see her standing off to the side now. Shaylin Durham is involved. She was at the bottom of the pile at the last scrap. Now what are the referees going to do? That's T.C. Mesa there for Baltimore. She was the one who caught the pass and got slammed to the turf by Teresa Petrozello. She took exception to that, and the skirmish broke out. Petrozello, she makes the first hit. Watch this. Good play by Spencer getting the ball. Watch the hit right here. She throws her down, and then the retaliation. Coaches teach do not be the second one throwing a punch, or in that case, a takedown. The refs totally missed that. I don't blame Gary Clark. Petrozillo pushed down the Baltimore Charm player, more like a shove to the ground, and the retaliation got called. Petrozello with the first shot. TC messed with the retaliation as she bows to the Omaha crowd. She'll be leaving the field for a little bit. And her team will have a first and 19 now back at their own seven yard line. Check that, it'll be second and 19 after the penalty. Referees have totally lost control of this game. Most importantly for Baltimore now, 24 seconds left to go on the clock running in the first half. Spencer will get the ball out to Allie Dickey. 14 yards, rudely treated again by Teresa Petrozillo. That should have been a penalty right there. You cannot throw a player down after the play. Allie Dickey again, great pressure, but dumps it underneath to Allie Dickey. Petrozillo should have been called right there. Gary Clark is going bananas. Third and five with 16.7 seconds left to go. Spencer will throw again. Under pressure again, Jackie Smith just gets the ball off in time. Intended for Savannah Dickey. The ball falls incomplete and now we got a fourth down. Got to hand it to Petrozillo and the defense. They are not letting anybody go deep. She's looking deep, but Morgan Spencer has to dump it underneath for short gains. They have to try to get the ball in the end zone with only 15 seconds left in the half. We talked about Jackie Smith in pregame. She came up big there with the speed off the edge. On fourth down, Spencer to throw. Under pressure again. Just throws it up and it's intercepted. Ashley Lambrecht makes the pick for Omaha. Morgan Spencer with a bad pass right there. She was falling backwards. She should have stepped up in the pocket. She threw the ball falling backwards to nobody. Out there, it was a wounded duck. And Omaha has the ball. They got a shot to score here. They, got, they can throw it up in the end zone and maybe tie this game up. Omaha has time for one play. Six and a half seconds left in the first half. A sloppy first half at the farm in Omaha. Really sloppy. I'm really surprised because they have speed at receiver. The Dickey sisters can go deep. They're not even trying to throw it to them. Will Lindsey Noble throw one up towards the end zone? She will. Going deep. She's picked off. Savannah Dickey makes the pick. Can she bring it all the way back? Inside the 20. Whoa! Brought down hard by Shaylin Durham. And she'll let her know as we have come to the end of the first half at the farm in Omaha. Baltimore needs to win by 17 to get to the playoffs. They are up six now in a hard-fought but very sloppy game with playoff implications on the line for the Baltimore Charm. But Omaha's not going down without a fight. More hard-hitting action coming up. Halftime on LFL Football Night.
ridiculous. They are not better than you. Halftime at the farm in Omaha. LFL football night. Chet Buchanan alongside the coach Bobby Huco. And let's just tell it how it is. Coach, that was an ugly half of offensive football. Absolutely. As a former QB, I have to agree. Both quarterbacks struggled. Morgan Spencer, only four out of eight with one pick. Lindsey Noble, 0 out of 7 with two picks. The only bright spot for Baltimore, Kim Jack. She had a solid 26 yards on the ground. It was so bad for Omaha, their leading ball carrier was the quarterback, Lindsey Noble. Now let's give credit where credit is due. It has been a defensive battle. The headliners for Omaha, Teresa Petrozillo. She's already got four solo tackles. For Baltimore, Savannah Dickey. She has five solo tackles. She's assisted on two others. The only scoring in the first half, as the coach mentioned, Kim Jack, she got 21 of those 26 yards on this touchdown run to make our score Baltimore 6, Omaha 0 at the half. Obviously, Coach, each team's going to need to make some halftime adjustments. Chet, you know I love a good defensive game just like anybody knows that I love no, defense. No, you don't. I hate defensive <laughs> games. I love offense. I hate watching this game so far. Both teams have to open up. One of the big problems for Baltimore, Heather Hudson, their weapon is not playing tonight. Both teams got to come out the gate strong. So, such as they are, let's take a look at the first half stats. You can see Baltimore doubled Omaha's offensive production, but only has six points to show for it. However, Omaha is controlling the clock in the line of scrimmage. The big difference is Lindsey Noble's two interceptions. She can't have any more of that, but both teams got to get the horses out of the gate and score some points. Teams are coming back on the field for the second half. Baltimore leads by six. They need to increase that lead by 11. They have to win by 17 tonight if they want to get a playoff spot. 16 minutes of battle remains. LFL football night. Your second half kickoff is coming up next. Ready for second half action in Omaha, Nebraska. LFL football night. It's been a street fight in the first half. Baltimore leads by six. They need to win by 17 to get into the playoffs. And what offense there has been has been on the ground. Well, it's been all Kim Jack. She's got 26 yards, a great touchdown run. It's really sad when your quarterback, Lindsey Noble, is your leading rusher at halftime. They need to come up with something more than her here in the second half. Morgan Anderson is deep to return for Omaha to start the second half. Morgan Spencer will kick off for Baltimore. LFL football night, the second half is on. Spencer will kick it deep, five yards deep in her end zone. Anderson's going to bring it out. Decent return out past the 10-yard line. The Omaha offense will start out there. Nice return by Morgan Anderson. Not a lot of yards, but when the kick was that deep, that's the way to return it. Straight north and south. Lindsey Noble, terrible first half. Zero out of seven. A zero rating. You can't get lower than that, Chet. Noble will try and improve on those numbers as the Omaha offense will start at first and 10 from their own 11-yard line. You know what, Chet? She's getting no help, though, no protection. It's not all her fault that she hasn't completed a pass. Her protection breaks down again. She'll run and get out past the first down marker, nearly to midfield, a 13-yard gain on first down. Great run, but it's coming back, it looks. Holding. Number three, the offense. Five yards, spot, replay first down. They cannot contain this Baltimore rush. There's been heat on Lindsey Noble all night long. They got to keep some people in, some backs in to do maximum protection. There's blitzing every down. I'm surprised Noble isn't hurt. She's getting hit all night long. Usually it's the Omaha defense that provides all the pressure. Tonight it's the Baltimore defense. This game should be more than 6 nothing right now. Baltimore is totally outplaying them. Baltimore needs it to be more than 6 nothing. On first down and 15, Ashley Lambrecht gets stuffed in the backfield. She'll lose four yards. Allie Dickey and Tashana Gaines made the hit for Baltimore. Allie Dickey coming from the safety position. That's the way to play safety. You read running, you attack the football, and somehow she got to the backfield. That's speed. Great play by Allie Dickey. Omaha's going backwards. Second and 19, they're back to their own two-yard line. Great start of the second half for the Charm defense. They have the heart going backwards. Lindsey Noble will just try and 
gain some yardage and get some breathing room, and she doesn't get much. Only a yard on that play. Savannah Dickey made the hit for Baltimore. They are fired up to start the second half. Baltimore is. You have to make big plays. They're getting chances. Gaines had her in the backfield. Actually could have been a safety, but didn't make the tackle. A great defensive stop, but it could have been a safety for Baltimore. Not a lot of options for Omaha here. A third down and 18 yards to go deep in their own territory. Noble will throw. Looking deep for Jackie Smith. Can't hang on. Ball was tipped there by Jessica Johnson, but Jackie Smith should have made the catch. Great call, great protection. They had maximum protection. Jackie Smith was open. It wasn't her fault. Lindsey Noble didn't deliver the football. She was wide open. Should have been a touchdown for Omaha. We talked about her arm threat right there. It wasn't there. It should have been a touchdown. It is a tough catch for Jackie Smith after having it tipped. But still, when you get your hands on the ball, you got to catch it. You got to catch it. It was a bad pass. You got to catch the ball right. If she gets it out there, though, it's a touchdown. You catch it on the run, you go in for six. I'm sure Omaha wishes you could punt, but you can't in this league. Fourth down, heavy pressure. The pass falls incomplete. Tashana Gaines very nearly had the sack. Wow, the change of possession. Now Baltimore has the ball on the three yard line going in. This is what they need. This could get them in the playoffs. A first and goal for the Baltimore Charm. In business at the Omaha Three. The number one defense in the league. Ashley Lambrecht and the rest of her Omaha teammates hoping to stop Baltimore in their tracks here. I don't see it. Baltimore's on a roll right now. They got the momentum on the three yard line. First and goal. This is exciting. Listen to that crowd at the farm. Handoff to TC Mesta. Nothing doing. Might have gotten a yard. Shantae Bunting with a hit for Omaha. Nobody blocks Bunting. They block everybody but Bunting, and she's the one you have to block on that outside sweep. Great play by Bunting. Stops from short. Maybe they can hold it. Second and goal. Morgan Spencer, four out of eight, 28 yards, 18 rating. Doesn't look good, but she's not playing bad tonight. Don't need to throw here. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Somebody moved. Offer, 16, offense, five yards, To not make mistakes like that in games like this. This is a huge game for them. We'll put them in the playoffs. You're going in. It stops the momentum. A huge mistake by the charm. T.C. Mesta, a Omaha fan favorite. They like getting on her here at the farm. She was the one who moved. Spencer will run here. Second and goal from the seven. Gets inside the five. She's hit hard there by Teresa Petrozello. Morgan Spencer, she's not only fast, she's quick. What a jump cut. Watch this. We knew she's fast, but watch her read the block. Bam, she cuts in outside. She's quick as a hiccup. Almost gets in for six. Petrozello quick as well. Held that gain to only two yards. Third and goal for Baltimore from the Omaha five-yard line. Spencer will run. Will not make it in. I don't know. That's close. I think she might have broke the plane. They've marked her at the one-yard line. I'd like to see that again, but she's not complaining, so she probably did not get in. But what an athlete. There was absolutely nothing there, and she made a lot of yards with no help. I thought she got in, but here we go. Fourth and goal. Huge play. This could be Baltimore's season. Fourth and goal from the one. Baltimore needs points. They have to win by 17 tonight to make it into the Eastern Conference playoffs. Chet, that was real close. I thought she got in. They are going to look at it. That's a good call by the ref. Watch, I thought she got in. Great cutback by Spencer, but watch her knee. Knee's down, but the, is the ball did it, did it break the plate. Just short. Watch it, watch it. Down. It is Just short. short. It is short. That angle showed it. That, that angle you can't tell. The other angle showed it was short. You never know, though, Chet. With these referees tonight, you never know how they're going to call it. 
while they get things sorted out, let's take a look at some of the big hits we've had in this game tonight. If you like defensive football, these have been some of the top hits we've seen all season. While Omaha gets ready for what should be remember. a fourth and goal, let's listen in on defensive right. coordinator Willie Always Garrett. Remember, and the biggest thing, if they go in, if she's that shotgun, she's going to roll out toward that center. So you got to get in your flat, get to your flat. This is goal line goal. Yeah, now I'm bringing, hey, we're bringing everybody. Bring it, everybody. We gotta go. They're bringing the heat. Willie Garrett, a great football player in his own right when he played for the Omaha Beef. They're bringing everybody. Did you say the Omaha Beef? I did. The Omaha Beef. Here comes the call. Rolling on the field. This is called by video. We're going to stand short of the goal line. Fourth down. Ball will be charged. Unbelievable! That's all you, bitch! That's bullshit! That is bullshit! Gary Clark has been yelling at the officials all night long. He's got to start coaching the football team. Get this ball in the end zone. Right now, if I was him, I'd give it to Morgan Spencer. She is seeing the field right now. She'll start at least five yards deep in the shotgun. She will run to the end zone. Touchdown, Baltimore. Wow, what a run by Morgan Spencer. Her feet were in the end zone, but did the ball cross the line? She was right there, but again, no blocking. It's the third run on this series that she just made great cuts. Uh-oh, we have somebody down, Jet. Kim Jack is the injured Baltimore charm player. We'll take a break. Baltimore goes up 12. They need to win by 17 to get to the playoffs on LFL Football Night. Back to third quarter action here in Omaha, Nebraska. The Baltimore Charm have just scored to go up 12-0, going for the one-point conversion here. They're only one score away from covering the 17 points. And if that happens, there's a lot of nervous people in Atlanta right now. Actually going for two here from the three-yard line. T.C. Mesta is stacked up, reverses field. She might get there, no. The Omaha defense stops her inside the five. The two-point conversion is no good. Great play by the safeties of Omaha. Ashley Lambrecht coming up and stopping a locomotive. T.C. Mesta going full steam. I thought she was going to get in. Great play by Lambrecht. Had her bottled up once, reverse field. Bottled her up a second time. The Omaha defense, top ranked in the LFL, steps up big. Jeb, what do you think? Baltimore might be going to the playoffs. One more touchdown. They need to win by 17 tonight. They're only up 12. Omaha has the ball now. 2.15, clock running in the third. Lindsey Noble. Misdirection again. Hands it off to Morgan Anderson. And she's loose down the sideline. She is gone. Touchdown, Omaha. Just like that, Baltimore is a little farther away from the playoffs. There was a hold on this play. Watch the replay on this. Watch the hold on the outside. The hold right there on the defensive end opens up this play for Morgan Anderson. Wow, what a run, but it should have been a penalty. What are you, best friends with Gary Clark now? That was a great seal block. It wasn't. It was a tackle. I don't know where the referees were. That play right there might have taken Baltimore out of the playoffs, and it should have been called back. Morgan Anderson, 35 yards for the touchdown to bring Omaha back within six. Even with the hold, what a call by Dante Allen and his staff to turn this game around. Noble keeps it herself. She doesn't get to the goal line. That one-point conversion attempt fails. 12-6, the Baltimore lead now with just over 90 seconds to play in the third quarter. Boy, that's got to make Baltimore nervous. Absolutely. She almost gets in here. Great effort by Noble. A stiff arm. The ball's short. It is not a fumble. The ball was down at the one-yard line. 
Even if it was a fumble, doesn't matter. The conversion is no good. So Baltimore will start again with a minute 34 in the third from their own 15-yard line. What a turn of events right there. A great call, misdirection. Morgan Anderson put on the burners. Great call. I can't tell you how good a call that is after Baltimore went in for a touchdown. Again, Jacksonville is the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. It's either going to be Baltimore or Atlanta, but Baltimore has to win by 17 tonight. Morgan Spencer throws on first down, incomplete. That totally turned around the play selection thought on Baltimore's side. Now they're down two scores again to get in the playoff. They have to start throwing the football a lot more. Jackie Smith takes the bow as she made the defensive stop for Omaha. Spencer will throw again on second down. Plenty of time. Tries to dump it down incomplete to Savannah Dickey. You got to hand it to the secondary of Omaha all night long. Petrozillo and Ashley Lambrecht, both safeties are playing an unbelievable night. They can't throw the ball deep. Third and 10 against the number one defense in the LFL. Spencer to throw again. Here comes pressure, and she goes down. Danielle Hawkins with the sack for the Omaha Heart. Again, she's got time. This is the covered sack right here. If she sets up in the pocket, she would have had more time. But the safeties are covering the receivers like blankets. That was a covered sack. Omaha's defense playing solid. The farm in Omaha is going wild as we have reached the end of the third quarter. Again, Baltimore has to win by 17. The fourth quarter's coming up on LFL Football Night. set for fourth quarter action in Omaha. Not a lot of fireworks on the field unless you go over to the sidelines during the break. Just what you don't want with a fourth and 18 coming up. The quarterback and the coach not seeing eye to eye. Listen to me. You listen to me. I'm the fucking coach. You listen to me. Not a good sign at all there, Chet. Morgan Spencer and Gary Clark going at it, not seeing eye to eye. You need to be together here in the fourth quarter. Spencer to throw on fourth and 18. The pass is complete, but they will not get nearly enough yards. In fact, they'll lose two. Omaha will take over on downs deep in Baltimore territory. Teresa Petrozilla, what a night she's having. Seven tackles all over the field. That's why every year she's an all-fantasy LFL player. Boy, now if you are the Baltimore charm, you are in big trouble. You need to win by 17. You're only up six. Omaha is on your five-yard line with a first and goal. I didn't like what I saw there between the coach and quarterback. When The time of the game when you have to be together Gary Clark was actually physically grabbing her so he would, she would look him in the eye. Not a good time to have the quarterback get in a fight with your coach. Omaha with misdirection. Handoff up the middle, Ashley Lambrecht. A three yard gain to the Baltimore two. Ashley Lambrecht, solid running back, having a great year. Gary Clark, here we go again, Chet. He's yelling at his quarterback on the sideline. I don't like this at all. You're running out of time. You don't have much time left, and you need points. You need your quarterback's head in the right place. You don't need to be yelling back and forth. You need to be telling her what to do on the next drive. Second and goal for Omaha. Nowhere to go for Brittany Demery. She'll lose five yards. Tashana Gaines was there to make the stop. Great play by Gaines. Nobody blocked her. She came straight through. That's what the charm needs. They got to try to create a turnover. Only six minutes left. Jessica Johnson was there to blow that play up as well. Now it's third and goal, Omaha. They're back at the Baltimore 7. This is the play of the game, Chet. This time, Noble will keep it. Inside the five. Gets away from a tackler. Reaches for the goal line. Touchdown, Omaha. 
Wow, great run by Noble. That might have been the final nail in the coffin for the Baltimore Charm in their season. Watch the kickout block here by Brittany Demery. Unbelievable block. Great read there by Noble. Gets it in the end zone. The Omaha are looking solid. Tying the game up. They might win this thing, Joe. Crystal Gargani grabbed hold for Baltimore but couldn't hang on as Lindsey Noble took the ball into the end zone to tie the game for Omaha. A chance to go ahead with the conversion. But don't forget, for Baltimore to get into the playoffs, they need to win by 17. That's looking like a tall order right now against the number one defense in the LFL. Not going to happen, Chet, unless something just ridiculous happens. But right now, Lindsay Noble reminds me of Tim Tebow. Her stats are horrible. She looked horrible the whole game, and now she's got Omaha in a position to win here in the fourth quarter. The handoff to Brittany Demery does not get into the end zone. The one-point conversion fails. But this is like a victory for the Omaha Heart tied at 12. Totally. I mean, there's a lot of time left. They might outright win this game to even their record at 2-2. Two and two. And this team, the way they're playing, is way better than their record indicates. Now let's see how the Baltimore charm reacts. You remember just moments ago, we saw Gary Clark pushing his quarterback, yelling at his quarterback. And right now, Morgan Spencer is sitting on the sideline. Lines. Is she going to come in or not? I think she is. Morgan Spencer, I know her pretty well. She's solid. That doesn't affect her getting yelled at. I just don't like that scenario in the fourth quarter. You know, like a Mike Dick and Jim McMahon. She's solid. That doesn't affect her. She needs to throw deep right now. She's got the targets. You got to try it. You got to try something. Yell that was one thing, but this was something else that we saw from Gary Clark. I didn't like it. First down for Baltimore at their own 15. Spencer will throw. Plenty of time. She'll dump it down. Hit immediately by Teresa Petrozello. Savannah Dickey made the catch. No game. Dante Allen will let Baltimore have that pass all night long. Takes a lot of time off the clock, and they get no yardage out of it. Baltimore will throw again quickly. Pass is intended for T.C. Mesta. Falls incomplete. Danielle Hawkins on the defense for Omaha. That's not good either. Mess is down and she's hurt, grasping her knee. The Baltimore Charm has lost their fire. They got no flame, they got no mojo, Chet. Well, they better find it soon, even though the score says this game is tied. It's like Baltimore's down 17 on LFL football night. Truly one of the underrated cities in America. Beautiful Omaha, Nebraska for LFL football night. If you joined us late, Baltimore needs to win by 17. Omaha's defense doesn't want that to happen. Let's listen in on defensive coordinator Willie Garrett. That's what happened. Right. Woo! Hey, yo, motherfucking I like that. Woo! That's right. Make it pay. Make it pay. I like Willie Garrett. He reminds me a lot of Charlie Strong at the University of Texas. Willie Garrett's going to go far in the football world. On third and ten, Spencer flushed out of the pocket. She'll be sacked by Brittany Demery. There's a flag on the play. Pound for pound. Watch Brittany Demery. Pound for pound. She is one of the top players in the LFL. Solid all-around football player. Flag came in late. Referee Vince Hayes with the call. He looks confused as they've been all night, Chet. He's asking the coach what the call was. He's saying it's a hold. He's asking Omaha what they want to do here. And they'll decline it. Walk on the waist. Number two of the offense. Ability to decline. Four down. Allie Dickey with a low block there. You have no protection below the waist. You cannot do that. You're going to injure some players. He initially made the sign for holding. It doesn't matter. Baltimore will have a fourth down and 10 yards to go. Really, their season on the line here as the crowd at the farm comes to their feet. Spencer will go to the air again. Looking deep. Intercepted. Shantae Bunting. And that should do it. Shantae Bunting, watch her jump the route. What a play. It looks like it's going to be completion. She throws a bullet. Bunting comes off. Looks like she's going to have a pick six. But that'll do it for the charm. And Coach Gary Clark, they are done.
no matter how this game turns out on the scoreboard, if you came in late, the Baltimore Charm needed to win by 17 to get a playoff spot. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that now in a tie ball game. 420 left to go in the fourth quarter. Clock running. On the other side, the heart. They're playing for next year. They completely turned their season around. They'll have two wins in a row going into 2015. Going to be an illegal procedure. I'll start. Ball start, illegal procedure, five yards back for Omaha. Chad, where do you think these coaches are going? On one side, Dante Allen looks like he's on fire. What do you think the future is for Gary Clark? Not great because it really seems like the Baltimore Char or Charm have underachieved here down the stretch. Two years in a row, they get right to this point and they can't get over the hump. Meanwhile in Omaha, they love their heart. This building is packed out tonight. These fans are into it, and they're liking the show. They like defense. They like football in Omaha. This is Midwestern football. Tough defense and score a little bit of points on offense. They got a great leader on offense. Ashley Lambeck, a great running back. The future is solid for Omaha. And they like ground and pound running right there, Ashley Lambrick. She'll lose a yard, but they like that kind of stuff here. It's a second and 16. Keep the ball on the ground, let the clock run. Lindsey Noble will pick up about half of what they needed. They'll give her seven yards to the Baltimore 12. Watch Noble, she's got so much moxie. She reads her blocks, waits for her blocks, cuts it up, solid game. You can see this team, even though they're not going to the playoffs, they are playing for next year. This, they want to win this game so bad. If Noble can improve her throwing in the offseason, she could be among the LFL elite. On the ground is Shantae Bunting. Close to a first down. Needed nine. She doesn't quite have it there. She's down to the Baltimore six. Watch the wheels on Shantae Bunting. She was a speed demon on a track team at Southwestern College. Watch her get around the edge right here. Almost takes it in for a sec. Bam! Great run by Bunting. Powerful lower body as well. It'll make a fourth down and three. Omaha would like to just take this into the end zone and again get a win. They're playing for next season right now. They're playing for these fans. They're going to take their time and talk about it. It's sad that they're not going to the playoffs because they're playing hot right now. They're ending the season on a great note. Their coach Dante Allen has brought this team back. Their defensive coordinator. I would be surprised if he doesn't get a head job somewhere. Actually, an injury on the field as we approach that fourth down. That's Allie Dickey, who's on the field for Baltimore. But what a great end of the season. What a great story for the Omaha Heart. Again, these fans are packing the farm here in Ralston Arena in Ralston, Nebraska. They love this Omaha, Omaha football team. They just like football, period, in Nebraska. They are a model team for the LFL. Great players. They have great heart, they have great families, they have great coaching. And we can't say it enough, they have really great fans in Omaha. Absolutely. Let's see what the Omaha Heart offense can do here on fourth and three. The good thing about Omaha also, Chet, defense wins championships. I look for this team to contend next year. Lindsey Noble will throw here on fourth down. Look at the end zone. Had a receiver that fell down. There is a flag. Let's see who it's on. Absolutely holding in the end zone. Teresa Petrozello was the intended receiver. She's the one who went down in the end zone. Teresa Petrozello, she was an all-fantasy receiver a couple years ago. Petrozello. She is the kind of receiver that doesn't have to be open to be open, if you know what I mean. If you're a quarterback, she has such great skills, such great hands, you can throw it up and she'll come down with it. The penalty, half the distance to the goal, was enough for a first down for Omaha. They now have a first and goal at the Baltimore three. 2.05 and clock running in the fourth quarter. They may not get it off before the two-minute warning. They're going to let them have it. Noble runs on first down to the edge. They'll push her out of bounds at the two-yard line. Tashauna Gaines saved the touchdown for Baltimore. What a heart she has. She's doing anything to try to get in the end zone. You know what, Chad? We were talking earlier about all Baltimore, how they have to cover 17 points. Well, they might lose the football game right now. 
That's a great point, coach. Score is tied with two minutes left to go. Omaha playing for pride. Baltimore playing for their playoff lives. LFL football night. Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, where they play the College World Series. But this is LFL football night. And next week, assuming Baltimore goes on to lose this game, it's the Eastern Conference Championship with the Jacksonville Breeze, Adrian Vernell and her team taking on Holly Oaks and the Atlanta Steam. That's going to be a great game. Cannot wait for that one. Jacksonville on paper, one of the best teams in their league, but they always choke at the end. Omaha on second and goal. Take the ball into the end zone. Teresa Petrozello, two yards and an Omaha touchdown. Great blocking up front. You win on a motion or you want on execution. Execution wins football games. Teresa Petrozello getting the ball in the end zone. I'd say they got a little bit of both. This Omaha crowd is loving it at the farm. Those guys are great dancers, Chet. The Omaha heart has taken Baltimore's heart that's an Omaha stake right in the heart for the Baltimore Charms playoff hopes. What happened to the charm? The whole first quarter, it was all charm. The fourth quarter, when they should step it up, they're not even here. One point conversion attempt. Ashley Lambrecht hit at the goal line. And she's, she's in. in. Yeah. The one point conversion is good. And that's the story of Baltimore's night. They hit her at the goal line. They just can't stop her. 19-12 Omaha. Look at this crowd. You would think this is a playoff game. They're going bananas. Can't say enough about the crowd here at the farm. Can't say enough about this Omaha Heart team. Great play by Noble. Misdirection. She pushes the ball out, breaks the plane. Ashley Lambrecht, great play. Savannah Dickey has played hard all night. Just didn't have enough there to stop the one-point conversion. Baltimore needs a lot of points in a big hurry. 135 left to go. They're down seven, need to win by 17. They almost have to score on this play right here. They can obviously go for the onside kick, but they got to get the ball in the end zone. They got to throw it down the field. You can't throw underneath all night long. You have to take shots. Morgan Spencer under heavy pressure from Brittany Demery. That pass is incomplete. Brittany Demery, she never takes her foot off the gas pedal. Wow, what a hit. Destroys Morgan Spencer, almost tears her in half on the boards. Wow. Spencer is lucky they didn't call that a fumble. They said her arm was moving forward. It'll make it second and 10. The intensity by Brittany Demery. Morgan Spencer better check her ribs after that hit. Second and 10. The back left early. It looked like she did on the previous play. They're going to call it this time. They're going to take it back. That says it all right there. That look on Gary Clark's face, that's his entire season. It doesn't matter a whole lot. It makes it second and 15 from their own 10. Spencer will put it in the air. Had a receiver open. The ball is dropped. Not the greatest of passes. Incomplete, it'll bring up third and 15. This secondary of Omaha has not let the charm do anything past 10 yards down the field tonight. I'm kind of shocked by that because I thought they are going to open up and go deep trying to have a high-scoring game. Don't forget, Omaha has the number one defense in the LFL. And this crowd at the farm's making a lot of noise. Near side this time, pass is complete. Crystal Keys down to the Omaha 20-yard line. Where's this play been all night? It's a screen pass, well set up. They should have tried that in the first quarter instead with one minute left in the game. 20-yard gain, first down for Baltimore. Spencer to the end zone. Pass is complete. She doesn't get in, just a couple of yards short. That's Savannah Dickey with the catch. Morgan Spencer can spin the football. Great pass on a post corner route. Well defended, but the ball is right on the money. Where's this been the whole game, Jet? Down to the Omaha one. It's first and goal. I didn't see a flag, but there's a call coming up. Substitution infraction. Hang on the defense. The penalties can fly. It's all the way. First down. Doesn't really make much of a difference. It's first and goal from the one either way. 
Baltimore is playing for the pride right now. There's no way they're going to cover 17 points unless Frank Reich and the Buffalo Bills come in the game. But they got to score here just for pride. I get the comeback reference there. Only 52 seconds left to go. Bad snap. Spencer's forced to fall on it, and they'll lose yardage. Allie Dickey didn't look where Spencer was, threw way over her head, just what Baltimore does not need at this time of the game. All the way back to the 15-yard line. Second and goal with under 30 seconds to go. Spencer with plenty of time. Omaha deep in coverage. Yelitsa Cologne is taken down right on the spot. Hey, guess who? Teresa Petrozello. Great stop by Petrozello. Welcome to the LFL, Yelitsa Cologne. Wow, what a hit. She got her bell rung there, too. They had to tell her to put the ball down so they could snap it quickly. Spencer will roll out again. Throws to the end zone again. Passes incomplete as the clock runs out. And the Omaha Heart win the ball game, knocking the Baltimore charm out of the playoffs. You got to hand it to Dante Allen and the Omaha Heart. I hope Allie Dickey's okay. She went hard into the wall right there, Chet. The crowd at the farm love it. Danielle Hawkins and the Omaha Heart celebrate on the field. We hope Allie Dickey is okay. And speaking of the Baltimore Charm, what does this mean moving forward for Coach Clark and his team? That's a great question, Chef, because Gary Clark right now, his team's not solid. You saw the fight he had on the sideline with Morgan Spencer, the quarterback. It's going to be a long offseason in Baltimore. Meanwhile, it's going to be a great offseason for Danielle Hawkins, Teresa Petrozello, and the Omaha Heart as they defeat the Baltimore Charm, knocking them out of the playoffs tonight at the farm. Once again, your final score, the Omaha Heart 19, Baltimore Charm 12. LFL Football Night. Our producer is Connor Schofield. Our director is Brian Castaldo. The executive producer is Mitch Mortaza. For the coach, Bobby Huco, I'm Chet Buchanan. The Eastern Conference playoffs are next week as the Jacksonville Breeze travel to Atlanta to take on the steam on LFL Football Night.